How much power should you use in ham radio? Every so often, someone asks the question, should I get an amp? How much power should I use? Is more power going to give me better contacts? The answer to this, of course, is more complicated than it seems, so let me explain. First question, should you get an amplifier? First, ask yourself, are you prepared to use one? Going from 100 to even 500 watts is quite a leap, and going to 1500 watts is a very significant change to your station. First, consider how much power you want to run. I think that for people new to amplifiers, they should run 500 watts rather than 1500, as there is not that big of a difference between 500 and 1500 on the S meter, but it can make a difference in some cases. Do you live in an apartment or condo with a loop antenna outside or even a dipole or vertical near the window? An amp may not be for you. First thing is that it may cause absolute havoc with electronics in your house as this high power RF energy is coupled into your mains wiring. Smoke detectors and GFCI outlets are highly susceptible to being triggered by high amounts of RF. They may con constantly nuisance trip if you have 1500 watts near your house. 500 watts may not be as bad as I know some who run 500 watts even from a vehicle. Also consider RF safety. I have an entire video on this. You should consider how your high levels of RF factor into the RF exposure calculation. You may find that you won't be able to run high power due to proximity to your neighbors or your own home. Watch that video for more information. Then consider the electrical power situation. There are amplifiers that use 120 volts, but the really high power 1500 watt amps use 240 volts. Of course, if you're not in the U.S., you're probably using 240 volts anyway. But in the USA, we have 120 or 240 volts, and 240 volts requires that your electrical service supports it, and you have a proper 240 volt receptacle wired up by a licensed electrician. Most amateur radio amplifiers do not need more than 240 volts, 20 amps. By the way, if you run your home on batteries and solar like I do, sort of, you may have to factor whether you have enough capacity in your system to run the higher power. Then consider coax and fittings. Higher power requires proper coax, and you really, at a minimum, should be using RG8 or RG213 coaxial cable. The smaller cables like RG58 may heat up and cause all sorts of problems. Besides, you want to spend the big bucks on an amp? Why not spend it on proper coax to begin with? Fittings are important from the standpoint that a loose fitting at high power may arc over and damage a connector, whereas at 100 watts, not so much. Now on to the question of how much power you should use. You'll find that there is not one answer to this question, and you should decide just what kind of communications you are after. The FCC rule, part 97.313A, says an amateur station must use the minimum transmitter power necessary to carry out the desired communications. The way I interpret this is that I use only the amount of power I need to comfortably complete the contact, up to the legal limit. Of course, I do have a station capable of operating at legal limit, but I often back down the power to 500 or even 100 watts or less because I simply do not need full power to complete every contact. And in fact, it can become a bit problematic because at high power on, say, single sideband phone, I may interfere with a station in some far part of the world, whereas I can turn on the power and not interfere with them. And that brings me to another point. Running high power doesn't mean you can hear the other station. It does make you what they call an alligator, where you're all mouth and no ears. To fix this, you should focus your station improvements on your antennas. But I have another video about this coming up, so be sure and like and subscribe. But I guess this sort of answers the question, will more power bring you better contacts? I think the answer to this is... It's situation dependent. If you can't hear the station well, 
Adding more power will probably not help you because if you can't hear the station, you can't work the station. But if the situation is reversed, where the other station can't hear you, but you can hear them, then you could end up benefiting far from more power because that extra little oomph can get them to hear you. And that's especially true in bad band conditions or where the other station has local band noise, like power line noise and such. What about modes such as FT8? Well, on most bands on FT8, I would keep the power down. Reason being that high power can cause your signal to overwhelm other receivers and they will likely not receive other stations well. So this is like when you're driving down the street and you use your low beams because your high beams will blind other drivers. The only exceptions I would take are marginally open bands, that is amateur radio bands that aren't fully open. Maybe you're working the gray line to work really far DX and also 160 and six meters because those are generally not fully open all the time. For CW, Morse code, I found that Morse code requires less power overall, but it doesn't suffer the same problem as FT8. And you, you can actually use high power without problems. What about VHF or UHF FM? The same principle applies, use the minimum power. For a mobile operation, I like to use high power, 50 watts, because one, I'm operating from the vehicle battery, Anyway, and two, I will encounter areas where my signal is blocked, so having high power helps to get around that. But I think I'll probably do another video on that. What do you think? Sound off below. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.